Losing Ibido feels like half of me is gone. Husband, Itwa, Igodalo. The senior pastor of Trinity House, Itwa, Igodalo, speaks on the life and times of his late wife, Ibido. Since the death of your wife, you have displayed a great level of strength. What has been your motivation? It has always been God and a refusal to think about myself, pain and sorrow. I decided to think firstly about God and secondly my wife. I asked myself what would my wife want and thirdly, I decided to think about other people. How can I send the right kind of message in the midst of this to help other people? I refused to think about myself and what I was going through. I thought more about what God would want me to do. As soon as I focused more on those things and less on myself, it wasn't a very difficult thing to do. How did you break the news of the death of your wife to your children? My children are young. My daughter is 9 years old and my son is 2 and a half years old. So it wasn't so difficult. When I got home that evening, I hugged and kissed them. Then I whispered to my daughter, your mom has gone to be with Jesus Christ. She asked what I meant. And I explained that her mom has passed on. She understood what passing on meant. So the question was, I won't see her again. I said, not physically, but in eternity. Then she cried. My son was too young to understand what I was saying, but she knew that his mom had gone somewhere. He eventually saw his mother in the coffin. My daughter asked me more questions, and I did my best to console her. But then, Children are stressing by God. From time to time, even till today, she asks me one question or the other and I answer her. Many people describe their wife as an angel in woman flesh. How do you feel that she's no more? It is not that she is no more. She may not be here physically. But angels are spiritual beings. She was an angel that lived with us for 39 years and 11 months and now she has disappeared. But angels don't stop working. They keep moving in the spirit, making things happen, interceding on her behalf and reminding God what needs to be done. I know that since my wife passed on, I received a lot of support, help and inspiration. Firstly. It rained throughout the week of her death. On one of the days, the thunder was so strong that it was as though even the heavens were weeping and rejoicing at the same time. On the day of her burial, as soon as we got to the vault, it started to rain again and it kept on raining until we laid her to rest. So, I know that there was a heavenly conversation concerning my wife and her entrance into heaven. I know that she may be gone physically, but we see her presence everywhere. The people she inspired, the things she did, and the provisions that have come for our foundation. People including governors call me every day, asking how they can donate to the foundation. Some of them didn't know my wife, but they want to donate. It appears Ibidum became more popular after her death. Why do you think that is? That is the power of death. You sometimes don't know what you have till it's gone. Death is so strong. 
especially in our society and culture, that it attracts people to the object of debt. All of a sudden, they become bigger in debt, but also that is proof of somebody that lived a life of purpose. Sometimes, you need to sacrifice in terms of debt for things to come alive. Martin Luther King became popular not while he was alive but after death. John F. Kennedy was the same. That's why I tell people that Nigeria is worth dying for and unless somebody dies for this country, we may continue to struggle. People should be ready to play their part and some of us, including myself, should be ready to die for Nigeria so that this country can truly rise up again. In my wife's death, she has come alive. Ibinu's death has strengthened her dream and people have been attracted to her for paying such a great sacrifice for the benefit of many. An initiative called Project 40 at 40 was launched in memory of Ibidu. What is it about? Project 40 at 40 is a gym my wife had for 40 couples at the age of 40. It's what she wanted for her 40th birthday, which was on July 19, 2020. She wanted to give 40 couples the opportunity to get reproductive grants, money for in vitro fertilization. The grants range from 1.5 million naira to 3 million naira, depending on the complexity of the issue at hand. We are trying to raise between 120 million naira and 150 million naira to be able to take care of these people and also ensure that we can see them through. It is not just the process but the pregnancy and if necessary, the delivery. We will not leave them halfway if we need to. How would you assess the impact of Project 40 at 40 so far? The project is going on well. We have closed our portal to new registrations. Over 1,000 people had registered before that. The Secretariat is going through the weeding process to arrive at 80 people that would be picked for the next stage, which are the medical examinations. On the fundraising, we have also not done too badly. We have got almost 60 to 70 percent of the total funds we are looking for. This means we can boldly move on to the next stages we want to embark on. The donors have given us tremendous support. Do you plan to sustain the project for many years or are there other projects being planned to honor Ibido? Yes, there is a plan to sustain this project in honor of my late wife. We would be doing the in vitro fertilizations every year. We also plan to expand to other parts of Africa depending on the funds we can raise as well as being able to sustain it. We would also be doing a lot of family counseling. Some people don't necessarily need medical treatment. They just need emotional or spiritual guidance. Also, one of my friends think we should set up an isolation center in my wife's name and is ready to help raise the money for that. Ibidu was passionate about motherless babies. So we plan to meet specific pressing needs such as boreholes and training within a budget. What is the projected cost of this project? We are trying to raise about 150 million naira. That may not be the cost of the project, but it's our target. If you do about 40 in vitro fertilization, it will cost about 2 million naira for each. However, we may get it at a lesser amount if you are able to negotiate with our doctors. The cost is determined by each treatment and how complicated it might be. We may also need to support some of the patients either at pregnancy or delivery stages. 
World Trials of the Ibidu Igodalo Foundation played in the past to solve infertility issues. We started the foundation in 2016 and so far we have done about 50 IVFs. We do an average of 10 to 12 IVFs yearly and add a 40% success rate. We have had conferences where we educated people and we've held events where we looked after babies and their mothers for a period. In three to four weeks, we should be announcing the people selected for Project 40 at 40. As COVID-19 affected the operations of the foundation, I can't say that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected our foundation. By God's grace, we have been raising money. Our medical support team is still ready to support us in spite of COVID-19. My wife died in active service amid COVID-19. She was setting up isolation centers all over the country when this unfortunate incident happened. She didn't die of COVID-19, but she died saving the country to provide help and to call for the people. It was a risky thing for her to do, but that was a big deal for you. She went out of her way to take risks and to help other people. As a man of faith, did you question God over the death of your wife? Or did you see a death coming? God is unquestionable. You can ask why, but you can't ask how dare you. There is a difference between how dare you and please explain to me what I need to learn from this process. Why did you do this and how do I move forward? I would not stubbornly say God has done something bad. God does not do bad things and sincerely, death is not bad. The only way to eternity is by dying. We all want to live long, but we must live right. Some people are not destined to live long. What are you doing on earth anyway when all you are here for is temporarily to fulfill a purpose? Once one has fulfilled one's purpose, the rest is either enjoyment or extra time. And if one is not careful, one might make a mistake in the period of enjoyment. An actor does not remain on the stage when a scene has been acted. Otherwise, it would become useless to that stage and the audience would boo him off. I think my wife has done phenomenally well. We would have loved her to be with us for a longer period. But God preferred her to go. Nothing happens without God's permission. So if he decides to consent to it, who can question him? What are some of the qualities you most admired in your wife? My wife was a very good soul. Extremely caring, passionate, and loving. She was interested in people. She meets people took to them very quickly and made them feel special. Most of our friends thought they were our favorites, but there were so many of them. She had the ability to make people feel special. She got involved in their lives and their children's lives too. A lot of children have special relationships with her outside of their parents. Ibidu just loved having people around her. A few years ago, she took about 12 people to China on an all-expense paid trip and the excuse she gave me was that they would help her bring back her luggage. I eventually discovered she just took them on holiday to expose them and give them an experience. Whenever she went with her team for any job outside Lagos State, it was like a little festival. They would go in a convoy of two or three buses. They would feast, stay in nice hotels and come back looking rosy cheek. That was my wife for you. Ibidu had many adopted children who gave kind testimonies about her. Will you be adopting all these children? I would try to adopt all of them. Can you remember your wife's reaction when you proposed to her? I am not sure I can bring all those memories out now. Maybe when it's the one year anniversary, I can talk about them. There have been many deaths this year, coupled with the coronavirus pandemic. Do you think all these are signs of the end times? I am not sure about that because these signs have always been there. 
This is not the first time the world is witnessing a pandemic. There was a Spanish flu in 1918 and we have had HIV AIDS. From a spiritual percept, these are just signs of God's disappointment in the behavior of men. All these have been proving that there are still a lot of things men don't know and we are not as infallible as we thought we were. So, we need to be very careful with the management of ourselves and societies. We also need to be cautious. My prayer is that this will blow over and we will return to normalcy. We would have learned the lessons and be better behaved people. There have been mixed reactions since the ban on religious centers was lifted. What's your take on that? Society has to return to normal. We have to find a way to return to what we used to do. The measures by the government were not meant to be permanent. They were measures to protect the citizenry from a disease. We have to slowly return to normal by taking little steps to see how the disease would be had. It's most welcome and we should go back cautiously. When the churches resume, we would see whether the disease reacts or not. If infections don't skyrocket, then we can open up restaurants and other public places still closed. There is no big deal about it and I wonder why people are making an issue out of this. The ban was not personal. A responsible government must respond to a pandemic by keeping people apart to curb the spread of the disease. I think now, we are a little better in managing this pandemic. We are not as frightened as we were three or four months ago. Life must go on. We are social beings. What activities have helped your healing process? I am still healing and getting used to the situation. It is not easy. It is like cutting off half of one's body. We used to think together and think through one another. I won't say that I have deliberately engaged in any activity to help me through. I just live the way I need to and react to situations the way I want to. However, I didn't rush into anything. I took my time. I didn't do anything I didn't feel like doing. I did only things that I felt were proper to do. I have not rushed myself into anything because of my mental state. For example, for the first six weeks, I didn't watch the audition because I wasn't interested. If I don't feel like going out, I wouldn't. Thank God for video calls and meetings. It has kept me in contact with a lot of people. I have told myself to gently re-enter society. Of course, my routine has changed because I need to spend more time with my children, thinking and managing the activities that my wife used to oversee. I need to spend time with our staff and do some domestic activities. Those things were not my business before. My life has changed and I hope the other people I am responsible to, my professional practice and church, will understand and accept that they have to deal with me from a slightly different perspective going forward. Spiritual people often claim to see things that others don't see. Have you had any vision or dream about your late wife since her passing? I have had a few dreams and revelations, but those are not right for public consumption. Some people think you are really hurting and trying to be stoic on the surface. It is not a pleasant experience not being with someone that one loves, so there is this pain that comes with that. However, it is not a crushing pain that makes me unable to think. I have accepted what has happened. I am not annoyed, bitter, or hungry. I miss my wife very much, but I accept that it is what God allowed. Therefore, I must be able to do what is right because it is not about me. It is about the person that has passed on, God and the people I am responsible for. If I am so pained that I can't make money to feed my children or receive people who come to commiserate with me, then I have not done well. If I am that pained, I wouldn't be able to encourage other people, such as my wife's family and my siblings. I tell them that we should lift ourselves out of this situation and face the future together. I have to be there for my children. It is not about me. It is about making sure that everyone is happy and we can move 